everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and Happy New Year. I thought I'd give you a quick tour. Here we are on the second day of January, 2021. And I wanted to give you an update from the foodscape, see how things are growing. But first I wanted to show you, it's been raining the last few days. So we've gotten about three and a half inches of rain. Everything is super soggy here in my sandy swamp, which I know, Sounds like a contradiction, but it is the reality for many of us who live in central North Carolina, going into kind of the Sand Hills region where it's pretty flat, it's super sandy, and it's extremely saturated. So in this bed behind me, I have posted a lot of videos of getting this planted and you can see from that green hue that everything is really starting to germinate and grow through the winter. I've been getting a ton of questions about when to seed and uh, how long into the season you can seed. And, and honestly, I don't know because I've tried to always get this done November, December. So this year it's my goal to keep trying to sow seed of poppies and larkspur and uh, these spring flowering things throughout the winter. I'm going to do it through January and into February just so I can give you all some, you know, information on, on when to seed. I will say that from experience, I still think that seeding on the weekend of, of Thanksgiving is the best idea. And that is simply because of the plant's performance. So you can see all this barley behind me, it's growing really, really well. It's totally, it germinated really fast and it'll just keep growing out all winter. Where in contrast, the barley that I sowed, I don't know, like maybe not quite two weeks ago, it hasn't germinated at all. And I've been seeing a ton of birds out here poking around, which makes me wonder if they might be stealing some of the seed that I sowed. So time will tell, I hope I'm wrong. Maybe after this three and a half inch rain, all the seed will germinate readily and that concern won't be a problem. But again, you never know. And maybe there's something about that sow your seeds on Black Friday timing that really is magic. So other parts of the foodscape are looking good. Uh, we've been lucky. Our lowest temperature so far has been 21. And we've really been overall mild and extremely wet. There's nothing that's dry period, anywhere in, in this general region. Uh, but that's definitely made plants grow really strong, like this, this stand of barley in this um, metal feed tank from Tractor Supply. You know, if, if you've never grown grains before, that might be a pretty neat way to just try it for the first time. Another thing you can do is just plant it in containers. So that is barley with Everillo Carex planted next to it. Now I've gotten a lot of questions about poppy self-sowing and yeah, they will. Look, here was a self-sown poppy, but do you notice where it is? Like in the most inconvenient place ever at the base of this pot adjacent to my walkway. And that's what they do when they self-sow. They never self-sow in the areas like in the center of the bed where you actually want the poppies to grow. They always grow in the awkward places. And this is why I sow my seed every year intentionally, because if I was depending on them self-sowing, I wouldn't get them where I want them. Remember, poppies don't transplant. And here's another reason to grow grains. The cats absolutely love nibbling on it. <laughs> There's a little Ava Grace. <laughs> I clearly garden for cats. I, I love dogs too, but I only have cats at the moment. I've got a lot of cutbacks to do. And typically I do this with a lawnmower and I just haven't been able to because it's been so wet. Now you can see, in addition to cutbacks, this is a Phlox paniculata stand. I have a lot of weeds, and I've gotta come in here and dig these out by hand. That's chickweed popping up all through this bed. But it won't take long, I just need like a couple of days for it to not pour down rain constantly. So, it'll get done eventually. So you might be wondering how the root pouches are doing that I overhauled last week or two weeks ago. I don't know, holidays make time kind of have no meaning. 
And I'm calling this a success. You see, it's a little bit sagged, but nowhere near what it was. And we've had plenty of rain, so all this compost is well watered in. And so it's really holding its shape. And I, I think that for me is gonna be my long-term solution to growing in these large 100 gallon root pouches. I do still have broccoli to harvest and I have some cabbage, which we ate yesterday for New Year's luck. And of course some Swiss chard. And there's actually just a lot of random things growing all throughout the, the foodscape. Like I've got that dinosaur kale growing everywhere and you know, a massive stand of arugula back there. But I'm gonna start sowing some more seeds just in random open places. And it's not that I'll be harvesting them now, it's more for getting a jump start on spring. And I was talking earlier about inconvenient places for poppies. Well, there you have it. Look, they're big and they're beautiful and they're absolutely gonna flower. And then they're gonna flop over this walkway and I'm not gonna be able to get through. I'm not gonna take them out because, you know, I can't do that. But it's still very, very inconvenient how they place themselves. So speaking of getting seeds started, here's a pot that I did, I don't know, a month or so ago. And it has, you know, again, everything is sown directly in soil cube, organic compost, no fertilizer. This has been outside the whole time. It's not covered, it's not protected. And you know, the seeds are kind of slow to grow at this season, but this is gonna, you know, grow out over the next few months and provide a lot of harvestability to make salads from. So this is a really easy thing to do. Just one pack of, of like mixed lettuce seeds into a container and voila, what you'll get is, you know, this really beautiful dynamic combination. So for the past few months, I've been watching my rosemary decline. And honestly, I haven't done my research on this at all. I don't know if this is a leaf miner. I don't know what it is. I don't know what is causing this discoloration. I'm sure it's like a Google search away, but um, I'm kind of thinking I might just do something that may cause a lot of shock and awe, but I think I'm just gonna cut them down. Um, I don't care, I can buy rosemary literally anywhere. It's like completely available at every garden center in the spring, so it's not sacred. Um, and you know, I'm not gonna dig it out because I'm not that ambitious. But what I probably am going to do is just like cut it way back to this like woody stalk and it probably won't reflush, but I don't care. I'll just replace it. And to be honest, this was a stupid place to put rosemary to begin with because I'm constantly having to prune it because it wants to grow bigger than the space allows. And this was a really wonderful corner prior to me planting this rosemary here for me to be able to put in seasonal plants. So, um, you know, I, I just, I really want people to like not be so emotionally <laughs> indebted to the things that you plant. If you put it in the wrong place and you don't, you don't feel like transplanting it or, you know, a plant that size, it's not going to transplant. Why would I go to the effort of doing that? Who cares? Just kill it and replace it. It's no big deal. <laughs> Maybe that's from years of being a plant propagator. And I used to always say like, nothing is sacred. We can always make more, but it's the truth. So in addition to these cute cats running all around, uh, there's that Zenobia that I did a post on not too long ago on Instagram. And another one of my favorite plants, Rhodia japonica, which I will do a post on soon. Cause I actually have a pretty large collection of Rhodia um, some really interesting ones, like this is a kind of a dwarf form, and this is one that has this variegated dragon. The dragon is this kind of funny ridge in the middle of the leaf. Anyhow, it's kind of an obscure broadleaf evergreen from Japan, from Japan that I just am totally bonkers for. But I wanted to show you the plants that have been really catching my eye from my kitchen window. So I look out my window into this woodland and the woodland is a swamp, legit swamp. And it's kind of a mess. It's full of invasive plants. Uh, that's specifically Ligustrum sinensis. That's from birds pooping out the seeds. 
and I use it to deposit some larger bits of compost. But what I've been seeing are these gorgeous silvery buds of the Edgeworthia. So this is Edgeworthia chrysantha here, and they just shine. It's so remarkable. And I have quite a few plants. Now I'm hoping I see, okay, good. Last year we had an early freeze and the buds started to get like kind of cylindrical looking and then the insides all fell out and didn't open and then I only had flowers on the outside edge and it was such a letdown. But that was because we got cold all of a sudden. This year we did not have that problem. And I have a couple different varieties back here. And I'll be honest, I still think that this is a different species. I got this and I learned this as Edgeworthia papifera. And you see, it's much smaller. And if you'll notice, this one didn't drop its leaves. Whereas literally right behind it, that's Edgeworthia chrysantha, a variety called snow cream. And you see, everything about this plant is smaller. I mean, first of all, it's overall stature is smaller. They're the same age. They've both been planted here almost 10 years. Um, the, the stalks are really small. The, the flowers, the leaves are much smaller. Um, versus Chrysantha, that is, you know, it's just so robust. I mean, look at, look at how much bigger the flowers are and the stalk and just the overall growing habit is significantly bigger. So, uh, I recommend growing both. <laughs> <laughs> don't make a decision grow both and um, they really like a kind of a woodland area but you can grow them in more Sun and they will do fine but they, they really do not like to dry out too much and that's why they've done so well here in this woodland swamp which you can see I've actually kind of tried to create a little a little area for some of the water to drain through and it's uh, you know, it's just, it's so wet back here. It stays wet. Um, some of this water, you know, might actually be like a couple of feet deep. It's, it's really deceiving. Um, so yeah, that's what living in a woodland swamp looks like. And basically the ground is saturated and it just fills from this, from this back woodland up into the yard and, and we'll frequently have standing water you know, up to the middle of the yard. So speaking of Edgeworthia, this is my best plant on the property. And I've talked about this, I know on Instagram, but maybe not on YouTube. Um, it, it was a rooted cutting from an episode of Growing a Greener World. And it, Basically, I, I potted it into this container and set it here and it rooted in and now it's the happiest plant that I have. And it's, you know, in a completely ridiculous place, which is probably why it's so happy. And it's also the first one this year to show any flowers. And there we have just a few outer buds uh, with a pollinator attached right there. And this is actually where I will come through and harvest a lot of these flowers for floating arrangements because no one comes back here. Very rarely do I come back here. This is like my pot storage area. So I'm not enjoying this. It's not like it's out in the middle of my front yard where everybody could get a whiff. So instead, I'm not going to try and move it. That would be insane. <laughs> when a plant is happy, leave it. Um, but instead I'm just gonna, you know, harvest these flowers as they start to open and, and enjoy them in floating arrangements and make really beautiful dynamic displays that way. So some of the camellias got a bit damaged from that 21 degrees that we had last week, but a lot of plants don't mind. Like the arums look great. It's arum metallicum. That's a winter active. And look at here. This is one of my favorite camellias. This is Tama Americana. And isn't that just the most beautiful flower? I'm definitely gonna pick these and put them into floating flower arrangements today so I can enjoy them on my back deck. Another one of my favorite camellias that's been blooming so well this year is this massive Higo form. 
And this is a variety called Happy. Now, Higo forms are a type of Camellia japonica that have been selected to have only these outer array of petals and then this giant center of stamens that resembles the sun. And these were first uh, cultivated by uh, the samurais of Japan. And I just think they're a really, really special plant. And they're one of my favorite flower forms of Camellia. They're really great for pollinators. All right, an update from this border that we did right before Christmas. And you can see I have a lot of geranium that I didn't do a good job pulling out. So I have more weeding to do in here. But I'm really excited to see this tiny stuff. So that is, I think these are poppies germinating. And I see in here, yes. Remember we sowed oats mixed with peas? That's the oats. These are some peas. So um, like here's actually a pea seed that didn't really get into the ground but it's starting to germinate. Oops, if you can see that. So I'm just gonna plug that in into the soil. Same thing here, here's one. See how it's, it's breaking its seed coat. So I'm just gonna thumb it into the ground and it'll germinate there. So I'm really pleased to see that actually, there's a whole bunch of, of, pea, of peas that didn't make it into the soil. I'm just gonna take this opportunity to get them in. But see, they're germinating. Look at that the cotyledon stage. They have a will, you know? It's the thing. Here, I'm, I'm showing you like, like one of the worst practices and these plants will still succeed. So it really doesn't require you to be the world's best gardener. It's really about and just paying attention, I guess. Honestly, I, this these things will germinate and grow whether I came out and pushed them into the ground or not. <laughs> Aren't plants amazing? Well, this is a surprise to see. Here we have Forsythia blooming already. Like I said, we're on January 2nd. <laughs> it's pretty doggone early for Forsythia to be blooming. Something just fell out of the woodlands. But I think I'm gonna take some of these branches and bring them in to force them inside in arrangements because they will look really pretty and bring in some little rays of sunshine. But I think for this afternoon, while it's dry, I am just gonna come right out here and I'm gonna hand weed this front bed and get some more seeds directly sown into the garden so that I can give you an update later on on how the plants perform when they're sown on January 2nd. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a super happy new year and have a great time exploring your garden.